Okay, next item is a disciplinary action on uh, police officer Jay Blackington. Uh, need to announce at this point in time that since Mr. Berkshire uh, is our city attorney, also a board member, he cannot vote in any disciplinary action. So we have to appoint a third member in cases such as this. We have appointed Bruce Carson, who's our uh, building commissioner, to set in uh, as a vote on this hearing. And this meets all the criteria that we need to make sure that we are legal. Uh, the reason that Mr. Berkshire cannot, if there is an action taken today, then Mr. Buffington does have the right to appeal. And if he does appeal, then Mr. Berkshire would actually act as a prosecutor in that case. The Board of Works would be the judge, he would be the prosecutor, and then Mr. Buffington could secure legal counsel if he so chooses. And so that is the reason why Mr. Berkshire cannot uh, vote in this issue and why we have to appoint a, a different person for this one vote today. So we have appointed him to, to hear this case and he is a legal vote in this matter. He'd be throughout the process too. Pardon? He'd be throughout the process too. Yeah. yeah. So he is here if there is an appeal filed that he will be here to, to go through the whole appeal process. Okay. With that, uh, Chief Rainey, would you uh, bring the case before us, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, for that board members. Uh, it was brought to my attention <coughs> on January the 27th, 2015, at approximately 9 o'clock in the morning of an incident uh, that Lieutenant Tussie, who was the second shift at 311 uh, shift commander, uh, a conversation and a threat that he brought to my attention we discussed about he also submitted a, a letter to me that I'm going to read to you uh, about this it says to Chief Rainey while on duty at the Peru Police Department in the supervisor's area I was sitting at the second shift desk the time is approximately between 11 p.m. and 11 15 p.m. the date was Monday January the 26 2015 also present in the room was Officer Bill Raver, Officer Jay Richardson, Officer Jay Ballard, excuse me, Jason Ballard, Officer, Officer Jules Buffington, and Officer Jason Mooney, who was off duty and dressed in civilian clothes. All the officers were discussing an email which he sent in regard to commander designees not counted as part of the three patrolmen minimum per shift. The response to the discussion, Officer Buffington began speaking about not being able to take off Saturday, February the 21st, 2015. Officer Buffington said that the day he had planned to take off from his scheduled day off of work in regard to his son's birthday. As the conversation between the officers present continued, Officer Buffington became upset. He began saying that if he did not get to take the day off, he had requested, he stated, I will kill somebody. Then Officer Buff Buffington stated, and again, I don't use this language, but for the fact of exactly giving you uh, what he said, <coughs> Officer Buffington stated, fuck you, fuck you all. Officer Buffington made the statement in a very angry, verbal manner, Then Officer Buffington left the supervisor's room. I did not see Officer Buffington any further, and I am not certain if Officer Mooney was present when Officer Buffington made the statement, or if Officer Mooney had already left the room. Um, upon reading this and uh, discussing <coughs> with Lieutenant Tussie, and as well as uh, Assistant Chief Keller, I contacted uh, Mayor Walker, City Clerk Gray, as well as uh, City Attorney Bill Berkshire, to advise them of the uh, information that I just advised you. I also, uh, after that, then reviewed the City Approved Policies for Workplace vi Violence, which I will read to you. It's policy number 15, City of Peru, Indiana, wor Workplace Violence. The City of Peru, Indiana, is concerned about the increased violence in society, which is also filtered into many workplaces throughout the United States, and has taken steps to help prevent incidents of violence from occurring at city workplaces. In this connection, it is, the city of, it is the policy of the city to expressly prohibit any acts or threats of violence by any city employee or former employee against any other employee in or about city facilities or elsewhere at any time. The city will also not condone any acts of threats of violence against city employees or visitors on city premises at any time or while they are engaged in business with or on behalf of the city on or off premises. In keeping with the spirit and intent of this policy and to ensure that the city's objectives in this regard are attained, the city committed to the following. 
provide a safe and healthy work environment in accordance with city safety and health policy, to take prompt remedial action up to and including immediate termination against any employee who engages in any threatening behavior or acts of violence or who, who uses any obscene, abusive, or threatening languages or gestures, to take appropriate action when dealing with citizens, former employees, or visitors to the city facilities who engage in such behavior. Such action may include notifying the, the police or other law enforcement personnel and prosecuting violators of this policy to the maximum extent of the law. To prohibit employees, former employees, contractors, and visitors from bringing unauthorized firearms or other weapons onto the city premises. To establish viable security measures to ensure that city facilities are safe and secure of the maximum extent possible and to properly handle access to facilities by the public, off-duty employees, and former employees. Any employee who displays a tendency to engage in violent, abusive, or threatening behavior, or who otherwise engages in behavior that city, in its sole discretion, deems offensive or inappropriate, will be subject to disciplinary action up to and including discharge. In furtherance of this policy, employees have a duty to warn their supervisors, security personnel, or human resource representatives of any suspicious workplace activities, situations, or incidents that they observe or that they are aware of involving other employees, former employees, contractors, or visitors that appear problematic. This includes, for example, threats or acts of violence, aggressive behavior, offensive acts, threatening or offensive comments or remarks, and like. Employees' reports made pursuant to this policy will be <coughs> accomplished to the maximum possible extent. The city will not condone any form of retaliation against any employee for making a report under this policy. The city also has established a telephone hotline that employees may use to call in anonymous reports if they desire. The hotline number is posted conspicuously in all workplace facilities. So after reading uh, and reviewing more on the workplace uh, violence uh, policy, I prepared a letter for uh, Patrolman Buffington uh, for legal counsel uh, Berkshire's review and uh, that was approved and I will read that letter that was uh, given to Officer Buffington by Lieutenant Tussey, who was also assisted by two of the Miami County uh, Sheriff's Department personnel. I'll read, read this in its entirety. It's from Ray Rainey Chief to Jules O. Buffington Patrolman, <coughs> First Disciplinary, 2015-R001, January the 27th, 2015. On the day's date at approximately 9 a.m., I was advised of a conversation that took place at the Peru Police Department between Lieutenant Russ Tussey, Patrolman Jason Ballard, Patrolman Jason Mooney, off-duty in plain clothes, Patrolman Bill Raver, Patrolman Jay Richardson, and yourself. The reporter advised that during the conversation, you became very upset and stated you would kill somebody if you did not get the time off for your son's birthday. You then stated in a very angry, angry verbal manner, fuck you, fuck you all, before exiting the supervisor's room. This letter is to inform you that you are immediately ready to turn over any and all Peru Police Department issued equipment to include but not limit to the following. And then we listed several items uh, that was to be turned over. You'll be off work with pay until the Board of Works has an opportunity to hear and discuss these issues on February the 2nd, 2015 at 9 a.m. You will not be allowed in City Hall other than to attend the Board of Works meeting on February the 2nd, 2015 at 9 a.m. If you decide to attend the Board of Works meeting on February the 2nd, 2015, you must be unarmed and contact Assistant Chief Rick Keller by telephone before entering the building. Assistant Chief Rick Keller will be assigned to escort you to and from the meeting. If you appear at City Hall any time without my permission, you'll be trespassing. The City Approved Workplace Violence Policy states that any employee who displays a tendency to engage in violent, abusive, or threatening behavior, or who otherwise engages in behavior that the City in its sole discretion deems offensive or inappropriate will be subject to disciplinary action up to and including discharge. I believe you are guilty of violating the city of Peru workplace violence policy. Respectfully, Ray Rainey, Chief of Police, Peru Police Department. Like I said, after uh, <clears throat> contacting, drafting this letter, getting approval, having the Sheriff's Department as well as Lieutenant Tussey, uh, take this out to Patrolman Buffington and, and receive uh, issued equipment that he had received from our department. Um, I interviewed, as well as Assistant Chief Keller was in the room, statements were reported. I interviewed Patrolman Bill Raber, Jay Richardson, and Jason Ballard. I had four questions that I asked them. I will uh, read those to you and then give you what their responses were. The first question 
Were you involved in a conversation last night concerning shift coverage with Lieutenant Tussie, Patrolman Ballard, Buffington, Mooney, and Richardson? And all of the uh, patrolmen that I interviewed uh, advised yes. Second question, did Patrolman Buffington speak about taking time off for his son's birthday? And all the patrolmen answered yes. Third question, did Patrolman Buffington say fuck you, fuck you all before leaving the room? All the patrolmen said yes. The fourth and final question, did Patrolman Buffington say he was going to kill somebody if he didn't get requested time off? Patrolman um, Raber and Richardson advised yes, and Patrolman uh, Buff, excuse me, Patrolman Ballard uh, advised maybe. Said as soon as I heard how heated it was going, I got on my phone. He might have said it. I'm not sure. So that, that's the responses that I received uh, during those interviews, and again, it was uh, recorded as well as in my presence in my <coughs> office was Assistant Chief, uh, Assistant Chief Keller. After receiving this information from the interview, uh, which took place during the time that uh, Sheriff uh, Tim Miller advised me when they were at the location, that's when I started the interviews. Uh, as soon as I had received this information, I contacted, again, Mayor Walker, City Clerk Gray, as well as uh, City Attorney Bill Brookshire uh, to advise them uh, of this information. I uh, drafted a letter then uh, to the Board of Works, and I will read that in its entirety. This was on January the 28th, from Ray Rainey Chief to Board of Works members, reference disciplinary 2015-R001, date January the 28th, 2015. On January 27, 2015, at approximately 9 a.m., Assistant Chief Rick Keller and I were informed by Lieutenant Russ Tussey about a conversation that took place on January the 26th, 2015, at approximately 11 p.m. at the Peru Police Department between Lieutenant Russ Tussey, Patrolman Jason Ballard, Patrolman Jules Buffington, Patrolman Bill Raber, and Patrolman Jay Richardson. Lieutenant Tessie also advised Patrolman Jason Mooney had been present at one time in civilian clothes off duty. Lieutenant Tessie advised that during the conversation, Patrolman Jules Buffington became very upset and stated that he was going to kill somebody if he did not get the time off that he had requested. After making the threat, Patrolman Buffington stated in a very angry verbal manner, fuck you, fuck you all, and then exited the building. Upon receiving the information, I contacted Mayor Jim Walker, City Clerk Jackie Dre, and City Attorney Bill Berkshire to advise them of the information. I also contacted Miami County Sheriff Tim Miller to advise them of the threat and to request assistance in obtaining Peru Police Department property from Patrolman Jules Buffington. On January the 27, 2015, at approximately 6.03 p.m., Lieutenant Russ Tuffy, Sheriff Tim Miller, and Chief Deputy Dave VTEC arrived at the residence of Jules Buffington to obtain his issued proof police department equipment and signed patrol vehicle. Lieutenant Tussie also presented Patrolman James Jules Buffington with a letter <coughs> stating that Patrolman Buffington was ordered to immediately turn over any and all Peru Police Department issued equipment. The letter stated that Patrolman Buffington would be off work with pay until the Board of Works had an opportunity to hear and discuss the issues during the Board of Works meeting scheduled February 2, 2015, 9 a.m. The letter also stated that Patrolman Buffington was not allowed in City Hall other than to attend the Board of Works meeting on February the 2nd. If Patrolman Buffington elected to attend the Board of Works meeting, he was to contact Assistant Chief Rick Keller by telephone before entering City Hall. Patrolman Buffington was advised that if he attended the Board of Works meeting, he was to be unarmed and would be escorted to and from the meeting by Assistant Chief Rick Keller. On January the 27th, 2015, at 6.46 p.m., Assistant Chief Rick Keller and I interviewed Patrolman Bill Raber in my office. The following interviews were recorded. Patrolman Bill Raber was asked the following questions. First question, were you involved in a conversation last night concerning shift coverage with Lieutenant Tussie, Patrolman Ballard, Buffington, Moody, and Richardson? Response, yes. Did Patrolman Buffington speak about taking time off for his son's birthday? Response, yes. Did Patrolman Buffington say, fuck you, fuck you all, before leaving the room? Response, yes. Did Patrolman Buffington say he was going to kill somebody if he didn't get request, the requested time off? Response, yes. On January the 27, 2015, at 7.03 p.m., Assistant Chief Rick Keller, Rick Keller and I interviewed Patrolman Jay Richardson in my office. Patrolman Jay Richardson was asked the same questions as Patrolman Bill Raber. Patrolman Jay Richardson's response to, the, to questions 1, 2, 3, and 4 was yes. 
On January 27th at 7.40 p.m., Assistant Rick, Chief Rick Keller and I interviewed Patrolman Jason Ballard in my office. <coughs> Patrolman Jason Ballard was asked the same questions as Patrolman Bill Rayburn and Patrolman Jay Richardson. Patrolman Jay Ballard's response to questions one, two, and three was yes. Patrolman Ballard's response to question four was maybe. Patrolman Ballard then elaborated on his answer by saying, as soon as I heard how heated it was going, I got on my phone. He might have said it, I'm not sure. After reviewing the information provided by Lieutenant Russ Tussey and the answers given during the interviews of Patrolman Rayburn, Richardson, and Ballard, I believe that Patrolman Jules O. Buffington violated the city of Peru workplace violence policy that states that any employee who displays a tendency to engage in violent, abusive, or threatening behavior, or who otherwise engages in behavior that city in its sole discretion deems offensive or inappropriate, will be subject to disciplinary action up to and including discharge. Therefore, I recommend that the Board of Works terminate Patrolman Jules Old Buffington as a member of the Peru Police Department, respectfully Ray Rainey, Chief of Police, Peru Police Department. In, in coming up with that, um, recommendation to the board you know I, I considered a lot of things uh, from what I heard what I was given uh, and uh, one other piece of uh, information I want to read to you that came from assistant chief Keller who had first contact with lieutenant Tussie uh, prior to coming to my office to explain the situation and the threat to me is dated January the 28th 2015 to chief Ray Rainey from assistant chief Rick Keller reference a supplemental report Dear Chief, on Tuesday, January 27, 2015, at approximately 9 a.m., Lieutenant Tussie came into my office asking if Captain Venipal was in. I informed him that Captain Venipal was due to arrive any minute and asked if he needed anything. Lieutenant Tussie then closed my office door and sat down. He appeared to be distraught, and I asked him what was going on. <laughs> Lieutenant Tussie said on the night of January 26, 2015, he and several officers were discussing my email clarifying your directive on minimum manpower of the shift. <coughs> Lieutenant Tussey said there was some hostility about the directive and officers were telling him in a disrespectful manner what they would do if they were the lieutenant. <coughs> lieutenant Tussey said this upset him and he proceeded to assert his authority as shift commander and reminded them that he was the shift commander and they were his subordinates. Lieutenant Tussey said that during the exchange Officer Buffkin said something to the effect of that if he didn't get the time off he requested he would kill somebody. Lieutenant Tussey also said Officer Buffington, then proceeded to leave the room while saying, fuck you, fuck you all. Lieutenant Tussie said Officer Bill Rayburn, Officer Jay Richardson, and Officer Jason Ballard were present with him and Officer Buffington when this threat was made. Lieutenant Tussie said Officer Jason Mooney had been present at one time in civilian clothes off duty, but he was unsure where he was when Officer Buffington made this threat. Lieutenant Tussie said nothing more was said and he did not see Officer Buffington after the threat was made. Lieutenant Tussie said he assumes that the threat was directed at the administration of the department, but he did not for sh know for sure who exactly it was just directed towards. Lieutenant Tussie and I then went directly to your office to notify you. Later in the day at approximately 5 p.m., Lieutenant Tussie went to Officer Buckingham's residence to re retrieve his department issued equipment, including weapons. Lieutenant Tussie was accompanied by Sheriff Tim Miller and Captain D Dave Vitek of the Miami, Miami County Sheriff's Department. After Officer Buffington equipment weapons were retrieved I sat on I sat on the recorded interviews that you conducted with officer Ballard Raver and Richardson regarding the threatening remarks made by officer Buffington <coughs> during the interviews each officer confirmed lieutenant Tussie's account of the threat except officer Ballard during officer Ballard's interview when asked if officer Buffington said he was going to kill somebody officer Ballard said maybe officer Ballard then elaborated on his answer by saying as soon as I heard how heated was going I got on my phone he may have said it, I'm not sure. In my opinion, this confirms Lieutenant Tussie's account that the threat, that this threat was made in a very angry verbal manner. After the interviews, I retrieved all of Buff Officer Buffington's weapons from his car and secured them in the armory of the police department. Lieutenant Tussie then proceeded to inventory the rest of Officer Buffington's equipment. The next morning, Wednesday, January 28, 2015, I saved the recorded interviews onto two discs and provided them both to you. Respectfully submitted, Richard L. Keller, Assistant Chief of Police. I think, you know, in, in Rick's uh, assistant chief <coughs> Keller's statement, uh, you know, he had first contact with Lieutenant Tussie uh, when he brought this to the attention of, of the administration. And I think he, if you remember in there, he said that he was distraught. Well, just a few minutes later when they came into my office, uh, Lieutenant Tussie, his face, he was very pale. He was wringing his hands. He was very nervous. And you could tell that 
it was something he was very bothersome with. Also during this time, leading to this, I contacted uh, Legal Counsel Berkshire and a written notice of a petition for a restraining order uh, was also served on, on Jules O. Buffington. Um, and it was effective until the hearing date, which is scheduled in front of uh, Judge Timothy Sparr, Circuit Court of Miami County, on February the 12th of 2000, 2015. And the uh, protective orders were for uh, James R. Walker, Tyra Walker, Russ Tussie, Julie Tussie, myself, and my wife, Rhonda Rainey. All this paperwork has been uh, reviewed, submitted, and I understand that he was upset about wanting a day off for his son's birthday. I mean, that, that's a legitimate concern. All of us want to be at home if possible for, you know, big events like that, even even when we are in public safety or police officer or whatever role we might play uh, serving the public. And if at all possible, you know, those requests are uh, are granted. This request had never, I've never received this request. I've talked to Lieutenant Tussie. He does not recall anything in writing or uh, for this February the 21st uh, request. Uh, when they had the discussion that was that they were talking about <coughs> the minimum amount of man coverage, manpower for different shifts. Uh, when I came here, the department was working on a four, four uh, and two rotation. Uh, at that time, they were working on a, a, a two man uh, manpower per shift. I changed the schedule to where we could work are required 80 hours every two weeks on the pay period because we were not meeting that requirement at times. And uh, so I put them on a five and two schedule. That's you work five days, and you're off two days, eight hours per shift, 40 hours per week. Work 10, 10 days out of 14 gives you your 80 hours for your pay period. Um, that would, would give us much better coverage and <coughs> minimum coverage would be three patrolmen and the supervisor. Uh, this was for the benefit of the public that we serve, of the officers that serve in the public, to where I felt there was adequate adequate coverage if some kind of an <coughs> issue uh, would occur that uh, uh, required more than two and sometimes one officer available to, to respond uh, to that type of a call. So the, the whole objective behind the five and two, number one, was to get our 80 hours in every two weeks that we were paid for, and as well as uh, to be able to protect our citizens and protect ourselves if it uh, so deemed necessary. You know, ever since I got here, the first week or so, I allowed uh, officers to come in and, and get to know me, me get to know them. We closed the door. We talked about whatever they wanted to talk about. Some of them stayed 20 minutes. Some of them stayed an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and during that time, I let them know that I had an open door policy, just I have as I have any place else where I've, I've been in command, and that if they had an issue with a supervisor. They would be allowed to come and talk to me about the situation. If we couldn't, if them and their supervisor couldn't get it rectified, and it came to me uh, during that process, their supervisor would be called in, and it would be a three-way conversation to try to get some, some resolution to this. Uh, you know, we, we do our best. Not everything is carved and granted. You, know, you have to have some flexibility, especially when you're talking about manpower. You're talking about public safety. Uh, people get sick, uh, and sometimes that. Uh, Obviously, you have to uh, adjust, adjust schedules, uh, adjust days off, adjust shifts, and, and so forth. So, but given all of that, I, I still believe that the threat was there. Uh, I believe the threat still exists. I believe that the judge who issued the protective order had to be convinced of that and had to, to see probable cause for that on those people. Um, and I'd be glad to answer any questions, but I, stu I still stick with my recommendation that I feel Patrolman Buckingham should be terminated for, uh, for his threat. May I ask a question? Uh, Chief, uh, you, you say that there were three protective orders issued? Three. Am I right? Okay, did the mayor sign one of them? Okay. Uh, did anybody, uh, other than yourself, that is prosecuting this action, was there any other signatures on any protective orders that I believe are scheduled for 
February 12th. I'm not sure, sir. I have the paperwork in front of me. No, no I, I'm, I'm just saying you, you, you recited that there were protective orders issued by the judge, which uh -huh. you consider to be probable cause or some words to that effect. But in any event, uh, what I'm trying to determine here is uh, where we are procedurally and you got a hearing set on the 12th, you're having this hearing today and maybe another hearing later on depending upon the outcome of this and I'm trying to figure out what's who's on first here so to speak in terms of priorities of who makes what judgment when. And uh, that's what I was asking about. Uh, so the mayor, uh, not his wife, family, or anybody else, just the mayor and and yourself and your wife. And Lieutenant Tussie and his wife. Yeah, okay. Can we adjourn for a little bit, Mayor? If I'd like to talk to uh, uh, council and uh, and perhaps yourself. Okay. Yeah. We'll take that. How much time do you need? No, go back here. No, no, how minutes. much time? Much time. Probably ten minutes. And we'll recess for, for ten minutes and reconvene now. <coughs> <coughs> Um, we're going to need to recess the meeting until Wednesday at 10 o'clock. There's some legal issues that need to be looked up and resolved before we move, any, move along any further. So we need some time to check that out.
six. Okay, we will recess this meeting um, for all media sources. I mean, uh, this Friday the 6th at 9 a.m. right back here. Okay? And then we want to make sure we're doing everything uh, the way it's supposed to be done. So we're just verifying some things on that. So Friday the 6th, 9 a.m., we will reconvene. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.